Well, what howdy. <laughs> Today, it's gonna be a fun day. We're gonna build a water tower for our IBC tote. Oh, this is gonna be great. So we got this IBC tote a while ago for helping out one of our neighbors and uh, it's 300-ish gallons. Yep. But we want it to be on a stand so that we're able to use gravity feed yep. to water our gardens with this water tower of sorts. So we're gonna grab this metal dealio over here, which we got from another friend of ours. Thank you so much. Uh, and we're going to put the water tower system together on it. It's going to be really quick and dirty, guys. All right, so this is a frame. A friend of ours got a wood chipper delivered on it, and he's like, hey, I don't, don't need this metal. Could you use it? And I was like, yes, we could totally use it. So we think that the IBC tote could fit on top of this with all the water and it'd be strong enough and it's already got cross bracing and everything. We just need to get it over to where we need it to be and get the IBC tote on top of it and get it all plumbed up. This extra piece here, I was thinking, what if this went on the ground, this side facing up, this side on the ground should so be elevated off the ground and then the legs of this thing sit in the corners and then we could put a wood platform in the bottom of it and then we could put wood sheeting all around the whole shebang and put a little roof on top of it and we can make a miniature shed underneath it that sounds like a great what idea do you think? And quarter. Okay, that gives us a baseline. All right, I'll go find some rocks. I don't know if I'll make it rickety. Oh, here's one to stuff under here. Just hammer it under, it's nice. Oh, that looks more like Oh, boom! Yeah! Sweet! There we go. These rocks gonna be able to handle that much water? Probably not. You think so? Well, I mean, maybe. I think if, it had, if they were all like this, instead of little bitty ones, they'd have a bigger footprint. So now we just need a couple bolts, a couple four bolts to bolt in these corners. Okay. All right. And right. I'll chop that limb off that tree. Okay. Oh, there we go. Nice. That right there is poison ivy. If you collect its oils and put it in a super <laughs> soaker full of cayenne pepper and some water, it's got two things it does. This, the cayenne pepper hurts someone's eyes while the oils from the poison ivy causes lasting effects. Long lasting On intruders. Irritation. Right here. <laughs> right around. We got this, the bung facing downhill. That IBC tote has been sitting there for the longest time, just waiting for right now. <laughs> so now we're going to clean out the IBC tote with uh, bleach and water. We're going to mist it with bleach and then spray it down with water. This one previously was used for hydrogen peroxide. So it's practically clean. It's never been opened. I just popped the seal off of it. So we're going to open it up and just give it a nice rinse with some bleach and let it air out and everything and then um, rinse it out really, really good. 
Aaron's getting the water set up off of the bus on the hose bib. You want me to tap the hammer? Oh, there it goes. Yeah, that was a beetle of some kind. Nice. All right, let's start by rinsing this the top. top area. Okay. No, it's freaking clean. All right, open that bung at the bottom. Bung hoi Next up, we're gonna remove these top bars so we could slide the plastic container out of the cage so that we can cover it in some black plastic um, to help occlude the light to prevent algae growth on the inside by keeping the light off of it. Looks like these are a T bit of sorts. Which T is this? T30. Get these out. Now these should just pop up. We're gonna use trash bags. These are probably not too UV stable, uh, but we're gonna end up enclosing this whole system uh, just for aesthetic purposes. Close this so that the handle doesn't get in the way. What if we tip it? And then pull it out? This way and then pull it out by the handles like this. Right. The bus is kind of getting in the way if we do it. Oh, this is super light. <laughs> you just leave that in there. there uh, oh yeah, it's got a bottom on it. Yeah. What if we... Oh, we can't. Like, can we take them out? Yeah. Take them out to wrap it. And then we'll put it back, back in. in. Yeah. And then I'll put them here just so we remember they go in this orientation. I'm gonna cut some metal. Let's see what she's up to. It's been a while. Notice how my young wife is putting on her pro. Back in the day when we were doing our bus conversion, we'd put on our ear pro, eye pro, hand pro, and any <laughs> protection that we needed for our particular projects. Notice how even after all these years, she hasn't forgotten how to protect herself from flying shrapnel shards of metal while angle grinding. Although I've never seen her do this in shorts before, this will be a first. We tried to find six mil poly sheeting that's black, but uh, everywhere was out. So that's why we're opting to do trash bags, black trash bags. <laughs> I think it'll work just fine. It's not really gonna be exposed to UV very much after we get the enclosure built around this. Um, but this uh, at least will limit the amount of UV. Can you rip off a piece of tape? Yeah. Did you rip it or use your knife? This one. Oh. Right. Short? Oh, look at the shorts. Yeah. I always 
Um, getting a little overlap. How the hell? <laughs> there you go. I'll take that one. My fingerprints get my bit. Ten dollars for a roll of tape these days. That's crazy. That's crazy. You spent ten bucks on a roll of tape. I didn't know it was ten bucks. There was nothing really cheaper. I'm like, well, we need it. So ten bucks it is. You guys get the hint, right? That's back in. Eww. All right, I'll lift this side. I got the bung. Bung hole. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Plastic's gonna be special. We almost need to tape it to the bottom so it doesn't lift up. Are there more spots that need to be taped? Well, like right there? Um, Don't push too hard though. Too. I'm not, I'm just gently pushing. Going with the flip. Alright. Alright, I'm going to push it up right now. Yeah. All smooth. You rattle can it? Yeah. Well. Uh, I think I put it on the dashboard area. Okay. The last ones I used. Man, I miss flat biscuit. Yeah, you That's get it down to an art, didn't you? I just smoothed out all those little bits I cut off with the flat disc. This is one of the coolest tools. If you want to like shape wood or smooth out metal and kind of shape metal, give it like curvy edges and stuff. Woo! It's not for taking like a bulky bit of material off. Usually you cut that with the cutting wheel and then you take the angle grinder and just finesse it. See what I mean? Yeah, finesse. There we go. Got the first fitting installed. This will go on the top right over here. So this part here is the water inlet. I'm just gonna hand tighten that on. And then we'll get some plumbing hooked up to that. Shouldn't have put it on the top one. I meant to put it on this one over here. Oh no. That's fine. Quick. We got this first, yeah. That's probably a good angle. Perfect. Let's see. Let's go with uh, 30 Maybe inches. Maybe go out a little more so you're, put your hand around the bottom of the elbow, like as if you were going to hold it. Yeah, like that. And then see how much knuckle space you want between you and the metal thing. 32 inches. Yeah. Nice table set up. 
About 51 inches. This is three quarter inch. Schedule 40, I think, PVC that we're using. This piece here is a garden hose. It's a, a female garden hose attachment. So it is for attaching the garden hose to up through here. And that's gonna set. And one last one actually I'm gonna do this last connection once we put it up there just so that we don't knock it off all right time to plumb plumb the bung actually we'll plumb the bung when we get it up there plumb the bung. So if we leave it up here, slide some two by fours under it, and then yeah. We think maybe three. Yeah. Or four. 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 Good beast. I yeah. think two through the middle, and then two. But they're all going to go one direction because they, they should go that way. That way, yeah. To lift it. Yeah, lift it and then I'll. Maybe you lift it and I scoot them. Yeah, you want to do that? Um, and then scoot them crown down like that. I'll put all these over here so that you can grab them. Okay. And then I've got the, the spot facing down, facing down. Yeah. All right, so first one, do it on the very front. No, it's fine. We'll adjust it here in a second. I'll do the back one next. Because then it'll be balanced. And these other ones might slide under. Yep. Yeah. One sec. My arm in there don't 
Nice. Because this is where the weight's bearing down. If we put both of the, these splitting oh, yeah. the difference like that, sure. and then slide that one, and then I'll go over there and lift it up. Okay. There we go. Nice. Sweet. Yeah, I think that's good. That's great. All Is right. this thing centered on the structure? Looks pretty good. We could probably go this way a bit. Just a hair? Yeah. That's probably... I could put a tape measure to it. Wow. To be sure. It's actually probably worth it. It's going to be a lot of weight. Yeah. I got uh, two and three quarter. I got one and three quarters, so we can go that way a little bit more. Like a half inch? Yeah, roughly. Three, three quarters. That's good. Two and three eighths. About two and three eighths. <laughs> That's pretty close. Pretty close. Sweet. Cool. All right, so now that the fill is all plumbed up, uh, we're gonna maybe put a block or something to keep it away from the wall just a little bit. I don't know, I'm not too worried about it. Um, it's got plenty of flex that I'll be able to connect the water hose. We now need to plumb the bottom of the IBC tote. That's where the discharge will happen. It's got a little quarter turn valve here for opening and shutting it like so with a butterfly valve on the inside. And so we've got a two inch male thread here. So we're gonna adapt this to a garden hose size so we can use gravity in which to water the garden. Now there are probably a gajillion ways in which to adapt to a garden hose. Different fittings, different types of fittings. What we're gonna use is a screw on fitting here. And then, so this will screw on there with some uh, tape. Then we're gonna have a, a two inch to three quarter inch bushing, and then the three quarter inch uh, to a short piece of PVC between here. And then that's when we can hook the garden hose female up to this male uh, garden hose thread PVC attachment. So we'll get these all glued together. And then after that, we'll get it attached to that. Yeah, Brian. Oh yeah, Aaron. Now, something that we've considered is that we do experience times of frozenness here in our area, in Southern Missouri, in the Ozarks. And when that happens, things freeze. Your, the connection points are the ones that will freeze first versus the volume of water. Now we could throw a tank heater on this, which would keep the, the water nice and warm and keep it above freezing. That's how we have uh, our gray water and fresh water tanks inside the schoolie. Um, they're 12 volt. they work really, really well. We haven't had a frozen fitting yet and we've been in several frozen conditions. Um, that's an option. Option number two is you just don't store water in it over the winter. You just leave it empty, leave the valves open uh, so that they're able to do what they need to do to keep from freezing. That's an option. Another option would be to heat the little room, like throw a little heat lamp in this. Uh, we're going to have a little storage under here. Um, that's also an option. So, I mean, there's ways around being able to use this uh, sort of gravity system over the winter, but I don't think that that 
our purpose will necessarily need to use it because it's for watering the garden and we're not really going to have vegetables over the winter except in the greenhouse and we're going to have a uh, water system over there that's separate from this one. This is just a quick and dirty that we needed um, to, to help us out. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. Just trying to survive out here. And uh, well, you're watching this, so we haven't passed yet. I'd call that a win. We're still alive. Yes, we are, Goy Goy. Yes, we are. Almost have all these pieces put together. Now I was considering um, gluing this whole stack onto the discharge right there. But if we ever needed to pull it off, we would have to cut it off. And so we're not gonna glue it to it. Instead, the connection right here, we're just gonna use Teflon tape and then we're gonna screw this piece off once all of these pieces dry together. So we're gonna take a little break and let this all set up. All right, now that this is all dried up, we're gonna put some Teflon tape on there. There we go. Another thing we got is a manifold and this manifold is gonna screw on here. This way we can have multiple hoses coming off of this. Now this is not a pressurized system, this is just gravity, but this gives us a few options for um, having a few hoses. So we're gonna put a block in between here so that we can support this contraption. Um, so it needs to be about mm, three inches or so. I'll get a tape measure. Let's see. Tape measure. All right, so supported. If we do a four inch block coming off of this, that should be perfect. So let's grab a four inch block and we'll screw it on here and then screw this to the block just to take a little bit of pressure off of that fitting there. Now there's one part that I have not done yet and you probably noticed is I haven't set up the vent at the top. So on that part of the T that I accidentally put the PVC cement on, well, I gotta get up top, there on top and put this uh, little vent up there. So I'm gonna build it real fast down here. And then after I build it down here, I'm gonna take it up there and then re-cement that piece and hopefully there's enough clearance that I'm able to get get this piece pushed on it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Maybe this uh, cement will loosen up the other cement. I don't know, I don't know. This is just medium duty gray cement, nothing special and uh, it's not a two part, it's just a one part. Like a lot, some cements, you gotta do the primer first. The primer's optional for this particular one, unless you're in like below freezing conditions and you need a primer, but we don't need a primer for this one. Another thing is uh, whenever this is filled up with water, I'm not gonna know how much is in the tank. So what I think that I'm gonna do, and um, I'm not sure if, I'm gonna do it in this video or another video, it just depends on when this one comes out, is I plan on uh, building a sight glass here on the outside 
um, so that I can see how much water is in the tank. So I'll either throw a T in here or I'll use one of these and uh, have a garden hose to a 90 with a clear tube going up um, to the top. That way I can see exactly how much water is in this tank. So we shall see. Another thing we got is we got a little screen. I don't know if you could see that. There's a screen that I'm gonna use this as the gasket inside here and then screw this guy on. There we go. Because we're putting well water in here, there's a little bit of particulate that that screen will help prevent and get up in the system. And then we can uh, use this guy here. There, yep, there's a gasket in there. And then hook the garden hose up to that from the well. It's a neighbor's well, and we're just, we get some water from them. Thanks guys. We had some extra screen from one of our projects. So we are gonna just put a little square of that onto the end of the vent so that little critters don't crawl into our water tank. It'd be a very small critter to get in those holes, like those miniature ticks. Those guys are jerks. Bastards. Oh, bastards. At some point we'll put a hose clamp on it probably, but for now this is great. That thing of beauty. Now it needs to get put up on top. We'll enlist our tall guy for that. Oh, hey, I'm up here in the trees. All right, let's see if we can't put this vent on. There you go, vent. Not like a chicken vent, a little bit different, different hey. type of vent. This is more like a water system vent. This is a, so as water fills up in the IVC tote, it'll actually start to compress the air that's in the IBC tote. So let's see what we get. Yeah, I got it on. It'll start to compress the air if there's no air outlet. And so what this does is it allows air to flow back out. And, uh, and also as you're draining, instead of it creating suction, it lets air back in. So there you go and there you have it. All right, it's time to fill her up. Let's make sure we get water out. Yep, get water out. Cool. Uh, I can see it start filling up right there in the bottom. Cool, cool, cool. Well, I'm gonna shut this and uh, continue monitoring. Super excited to have this for the garden. I know it's not rainwater catchment. We're gonna set up some of those, uh, but this is a good, a good step forward towards having more water. 300 gallons right here, Woo. yeah. I don't know if you watched a few episodes ago when we tore up our compost bin and took a big plant out of it and then put it in this curly mound here. Um, after talking to my dad about it, he thought that it was zucchinis. We were curious if it was maybe like a cantaloupe or some kind of squash or something. It was 
definitely a squash of sorts. So we transplanted it into this bed and so far it has not made it. We ended up cutting it back. It was flowering, um, but we didn't really trust eating something that was growing off of our humanure and other compost pile um, because it just hadn't sat for long enough. A lot of people say that it needs to sit for like a year or two years and break down before you uh, use it for gardening. And I think that that's probably a safe bet. Um, so we did sacrifice the plant and uh, so far it doesn't look like it's coming back. It totally all died back. Um, but the roots are really good and still underground. So maybe they'll surprise us and they'll pop back up. But I'm kind of doubtful at this point because it's been like maybe three weeks. Anyways, I wanted to show you how beautiful these miniature corns and beans are looking before it gets too dark to show you. Oh, and I want to show you my new water hose head. Um, it is making our watering process about a quarter of the time that the other one was which is really nice so now we'll have more time it's taken like I don't know maybe an hour and 15 minutes to water all the gardens with the other uh, watering head so this is a miracle now we'll have more time to go around and prune and fertilize and whatever else we need to do to the plants to make them healthy so it's always nice to get some of your time back here it is we just got this at Dirty Old Wally World. There's not a lot of places to get stuff like this around these parts. So, yeah, this is great. What a game changer. I gotta get back to it. We're losing light really fast. Okay, Brian's still working on uh, this vent thing so the water doesn't splash up. I don't know if he told you about that, but uh, I'll send you over here to show you what he's up to. How's it going? Good, I'm just trying to position this thing so it stops leaking. There we go. Uh, I gotta, I gotta uh, make the vent taller because here, let me show you. The, uh, the water pressure is so high coming off of the well that we're pulling from that it's been leaking from the top of the vent. So I'm thinking that if I put an extension on this, I should have made this taller, uh, but I got it just positioned off to the side now that it's i think at a different angle that it's not wanting to go out of there whenever it whenever it, the water deadheads into the tea it's splashing up and around so i'm trying to figure this out but i think i might cut it right there and then put two couplings and just make this a lot taller so that it doesn't have a chance to go up and around All right, so a couple of days have passed and we went to town, got some more plumbing parts. Because the problem I've been having is the water coming out of the uh, air vent here at the top. So we got some new plumbing parts to put in here uh, that will hopefully fix that problem. First, we'll take this part to the ground and let me make sure the part that I got for that fits. All right, so for that two inch bung on top, I got this two inch male and it is screwing in perfectly. So we'll put that one there. Not too snug, but snug enough that'll hold it in place, keep it from moving from vibrations. And then we'll get everything else built off top right here so the biggest problem i was having with this is these threads weren't really long enough to hold it in place so it was just kind of balanced up there and then when water hit this part here on the t water went down into the tank and then it also shot up this way causing water to come out of the vent here another thing i was having an issue with was the gurgling so whenever water was coming through here at such a fast rate it wasn't allowing air to come up through the vent very easily because i'm using the fill as the vent also instead of installing a separate pipe for that so i'm going to cut this here and then install another set of pieces that match this but in a bigger diameter two inch that way there's enough room for water to go down and air to come up all at the same time
sky and to keep the bugs out of the top because this is going to be the part facing the sky. I really don't care if rainwater gets in here, but I don't want bugs in here. I'm going to put a little piece of screen uh, and I'm going to cable tie it on there. Now this is outdoor rated screen. I think most screen is outdoor rated because I think screens typically are outdoors. It's uh, the vinyl stuff though, it's not the metal. Make sure all the edges are nice and snug in there. And then I'll pull it down just a hair. There we go, that shouldn't wiggle off. And then trim off this excess. Excess. There we go. That looks good. So this is a two inch T, two inch schedule 40 PVC. We have two inch PVC reducer to three quarter inch threaded and then we've got three quarter inch threaded to three quarter inch PVC schedule 40. Um, and then this is the only joint that I am gluing together because none of this is gonna be under pressure and the fittings on here are tight enough to just hold it up there. And if we ever need to unscrew this or anything or disassemble it, we could always just pull this joint apart, pull this joint apart, pull it all apart, and then we'll be able to reuse this in a different configuration if this doesn't work as planned. And this guy here is not to waste. I uh, cut this part long so that we can use this on another IBC tote, and then I'll just use uh, make a separate vent instead of using this one here at the top. I'll probably cap this here, and then use this guy on another hole on top of another IBC. All right, now time to go install it up on top and then we can test it out here in a minute. Um, I'm pretty excited about this because uh, this is going to open up a whole world of opportunity in the water department here. Now this guy should just seat right in there. Perfect, like a glove. All right, see how there's a little bit of strain on the pipe connection there, a little bit of lateral force. I got a piece of wood that I notched. This is a two by six yellow pine. And wrap. So I'm just gonna have that right there. And that's going to just stabilize that piece I don't even need to attach it. I'm not worried about anything. Gravity's gonna do its its thing. And then down below, our water fill will just be right there. And then we connect to that. So I might put a cable tie right here just to keep it from moving around on us. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put one cable tie right here and that'll just help to stabilize it even further um, when I'm pulling on the pipe down there to hook up the water to it. Now the ways that we'll fill this water tower here, uh, we have a neighbor across the street who we're babysitting a well for to make sure that it stays in nice condition and no sediment settles down on the pump. So they want us to run it every so often. So we're running a hose to fill that there. Now in other situations, we've got our little trailer that we have now, and we're gonna put an IBC tote on that and then do a transfer pump where we can pump from that IBC tote into this water tower one. And then eventually we're gonna have a water catchment system on top of the greenhouse shed and then also on top of the workshop that we're gonna be building here in the future. But before we fill the tank up, I wanna see how much water we have left in the tank. Now we put trash bags on the outside to black it out, help keep algae growth down to a minimum. Uh, but I would like to install sight glass. So we got the parts for that. Check it out. All right. So what I got is a hose mender. So this is a female, uh, I think it's a five eighths and to a half inch barbed. And what I'm going to do is I want to be able to see exactly how much is in this tank. So I'm gonna put the barb on this half inch inside diameter um, vinyl hose here. I'll put the 
hose clamp on it just to keep it nice and snug on there and keep it from leaking out the bottom. And then, so that's snug. And then this part here will screw on to one of these outlets here. All right, so I'm gonna screw it onto this outlet here and this one will just always stay on that outlet. Unless we need to take it off. All right, so that's a brass fitting. And then we're gonna put this up towards the top and cable tie it at the top. So let me see if I could make this a little bit more nice. Probably put it on this side here. That way there's no strain or kinks in it. And I got plenty of hose up there. All right, so here's how this works. Right now the IBC tote is shut off. So let's open the valve there. And now when we open this valve, water will fill this tube and we'll be able to see how high it goes. So let's check this out. Which way is on? on up to the left. So right there is where the water column is. So now I can see exactly how much water is in this IVC tote here and whether or not we need to refill it. So we're about half full here. So the next time we go to fill up the fresh water in the bus, we'll also connect to this spot right here, which will then push water up into the IBC tote and then we'll be able to watch the level as it rises and then stop before it overflows. So now one thing to consider is we don't want algae to grow inside this line or bugs to get in. So we're going to put some screen up onto that opening there. It needs to stay open though so that air pressure can escape as it fills up and then as it lowers, it doesn't create a vacuum in the system. So what we can do is if we shut off the IBC tote there and open another one of the other outlets, watch as the water level decreases right there. So we just opened that manifold up and you can see the water leaving as the water is leaving here because water seeks the lowest point. So now, that is empty we can shut that manifold off and there might still be a little bit of water in there that's fine no big deal but i wanted to get most of the water out here so through evaporation the rest of the water can leave and it will allow this line to stay nice and clean so the next time we go to turn it on if i leave this in the open position and we open it up we get the water going back up to the top or to wherever it is in the system. And you can see the little air bubbles escaping. That's totally normal. Yeah.